Dylan is a father of two who began investing in stocks in 2019, thanks in part to the Barefoot Investor. He's since taken an interest in the FIRE movement, Barefoot Investor and the FIRE movement. It's a miracle that Bryce has let him on the show. (laughs) Uh, But Dylan is going to share how he got started investing and tell us a little bit about his investing style. So Dylan, let's start at the beginning. Uh, Why did you get started investing and what's the story of your first investment? Cool. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, so basically, um, I'm not sure exactly of the order of all these things happening, but essentially we'll, we'll run through it um, um, as, as I kind of remember things. One of the, the main things for me was my wife was going back to full-time work, so she, she had time off with our kids and wanted to go back to full-time, but she was worried about um, paying too much tax. Um, and as far as I sort of had always known, the, the way to avoid tax was – um, buying an investment property, so it was something that, that I was considering at the time uh, until I read The Barefoot Investor. So, uh, as, as, as you know, The Barefoot Investor is largely around personal finance, uh, and his um, philosophy is definitely down the down the shares path rather than the property. So, that, that made me think, okay, there's this whole other world that I hadn't really even sort of considered, um, which, was, which was share investing. And around... Uh, at the same time or similar time, uh, we actually lost two family members to, to cancer. So Amanda lost uh, my, my wife. So um, sorry. Right. So my so my wife lost uh, her, her dad to cancer, and I lost uh, an auntie who was very very close to me, um, also to cancer within a couple of years. Uh, and and neither of them, uh, they both worked right up to to the point where they couldn't work anymore, so they didn't really get a chance to enjoy any kind of retirement. Um, and we, and they also left uh, left us uh, a chunk of money um, when they passed, uh, and and also some shares that we were looking at. Uh, part of the process was assessing the shares around whether or not uh, we needed to split those with some other relatives or to keep them and. We decided in the end to split them, but what that started for me was the process of actually watching a stock. So that was a gold miner. Um, am I allowed to mention the stock name? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so a gold miner. That was a gold miner. Evolution mining. Yep. Um, so I was tracking the price of Evolution up and down and discussing it with my brother-in-law as to whether or not we we sold or or kept it. And eventually, we all, we decided to sell and split them, and um, we split the money. So. That was my sort of first introduction to keeping an eye on tracking the process of, of, of um, watching the movement of shares, really. Um, then, uh, as I was part of the blue, actually part of the Barefoot Blueprint, um, which was the, the spin-off from the book. If you, if you really enjoyed the book so much, it, you were then encouraged to, to become part of this Blueprint Club, which I which I did, and a guy on there, random person put on there, put out a tip around an Australian um, biotech company, Immugene, which was looking at uh, immunology treatments for cancer. So for me, the that that link to the cancer and the, I'd, I'd heard a lot about immunology over the last couple of years um, was something I was really interested in. Knew nothing about it, obviously, so um, but I put some money into it, just a small amount, uh, and, and those two were essentially my first investments. Now, uh, Imogen is my favourite <laughs> favourite <laughs> investment so far. So I hear you guys talk about <laughs> what's your first investment, your most successful. And if you count Imogen as my first, then I'm going to say yes, definitely on a um, on a percentage basis because that thing skyrocketed. Even today, it's actually doing great things. So um, yeah, that was that was how we first. Uh, got into investing and got into the share market. At the same time, I put in some money uh, to a listed investment company, Whitefield, which um, I like for other reasons, relatively boring, but um, yeah, it's diversified and and, um, because I'm invested in a gold miner, I thought, well, go for a a stock that doesn't doesn't include any uh, materials, Mm. which Whitefield does. So... um, yeah, they were my first three, and uh, yeah, really from there, I've sort of 
listen to, started listening to people like yourselves a little bit more and uh, recognising that the reasons I bought <laughs> my first few shares weren't necessarily, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's not like that I'd say to someone who's starting up, hey, go out and do this. But for me, what it did was, was allow me to actually, um, yeah, keep in keep an eye on something, get involved mm-hmm. in, the, in the company, like, uh, especially with Imogene, like every sort of um, announcement that comes out or presentation they put out, you know, I'd get on there and have a listen to it, look on it. I check Twitter now and then. Um, bit young to be looking at TikTok and, and all those stuff. <laughs> never, <things>. never. <laughs> <laughs> Even Instagram um, escapes me a little bit. But, um, yeah, uh, get as much information as I can on those companies and then, yeah, really follow follow their journey, I guess. And um, given what that company's trying to do, it's just something that, it, it, yeah, it's really exciting and, um, you know, it's good to be part of the journey, like I say. Yeah, yeah. I'm just looking at Emu Jean's sh- uh, share price chart. It's gone from about three cents at the start of 2020 to 53 cents. Wow. So wow. you'd be pretty, yeah. you'd well, be pretty the happy. Thing was, <laughs> yeah, the cool thing was I actually paid a little bit more than what is it, for three cents, obviously. Um, this is back in 2019, so I paid under five, let's say. Um, and, uh, yeah, a friend of mine, well, they were looking at it a couple of months later or a couple of weeks later, and he goes, nah, you bought in at the wrong time. You know, you bought in on the way up and uh, and, you sh- and it, then it's dropped. And I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. I'm going to hold it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I have done ever since. And I bought, bought in more at, at 12 cents. And then at 30 recently they did a, um, um, uh, you know. Capital yeah, raising. Uh, issue. Cap raising, yeah, capital, that's right. Yeah. yeah, so they did a capital raising. And um, I try to participate in that at a, at a low level, but I think they allocated based on the number of shares you already had. And yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I only got quite a bit, a small amount. But, yeah, I've, I've also got options in there now because of that um, – because of that uh, purchase, and uh, yeah, that's something that I've always been interested in. I read uh, Danielle Ikuya. Yeah, I yeah. think yeah. she covers options in her book, and that was something that really interested me. But it's kind of something that I didn't want to sort of dabble in just yet before I learned too much. But mm. yeah, I'm excited to own options. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think uh, there's a lot of that. We sometimes get a few questions about options, and I think the the main thing is. You know, if you're interested in it, uh, there's plenty you can learn about it. But um, you know, you gotta you gotta do the work. It's it's like another layer Definitely. of complexity. But um, look, man, yep. congratulations! Not everyone uh, not everyone gets their first investment to be a ten bagger. So um, that's <laughs> that's pretty exciting. Hopefully, it's always this easy for you. <laughs> Well, that's the thing is, is, is you don't want to get too excited. I mean, I've heard your stories, obviously, about yeah. losing all your money kind of thing. And I'm like, oh, geez, it's a bit dangerous for me that I, that I had a winner at the beginning. So I've got to, I've got to really temper that. Mm. Well, I think the key takeaway from me, Dylan, on this story is that, you know, you knew nothing and it wasn't until you actually – got involved and got active in the markets mm-hmm. that you started uh, taking mm-hmm. more interest. And, uh, and that's one of the key messages that we often try and get across is that you can do as much research and paper-based practice as you want, but it's not until you have that stock, you follow it in the online and get involved in its, you know, as you said, updates and um, annual general meetings and that sort of stuff that you really start to, to learn about yourself as an investor and, and the stock market. So uh, yeah, great story. Definitely. Uh, Dylan, what was the biggest barrier you found when getting started investing? Um, for me, I think the biggest barrier was um, that you need to have a heap of money to start off. Um, so um, yeah, obviously there's, there's a bit of a belief around like make sure you pay off your house first and all this type of thing and then, and then start to invest. But um, yeah, for me, it, it, it's not something that you need to have a heap of money, especially these days with, with you know, the micro investing and all that type of thing. Um, but yeah, there's definitely an ability to get in at a low level. The, the, the rates, like you know, that we talk about all the time around brokerage and things like that, are all coming down. So um, yeah, it's it's something that's not 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 a whole heap of capital is required, and it's not as difficult as, as what a lot of people think it is. Um, I sort of, you know, encourage, uh, my, I had a, a, a nephew turned, um, 18 a bit while back and the first thing he did was open a TAV account and put a bet on it. I was like, oh man, <laughs> I was like, no, nah, no, nah, don't do that. Open, you know, open a superhero account and, you know, jump on and buy some shares. And, um, yeah, so he has done that, but yeah, I'm always encouraging sort of younger people to 
get involved as much as possible in the, in the investing and nice. even contributing more to super and, and things like that. So Dylan, what are some of the best resources that you've used on your investing journey? Uh, for me, the best in, uh, resources I think are, are books and, a, and podcasts. So I've read a whole heap of books um, around personal finance and also investing and obviously the two things can cross over pretty pretty easily. Um, I've, I've read uh, Daniele Cuellar's Shirtplicity, uh, the Peter Thornhill book around um, uh, motivated money, so around the, the debt recycling type of thing. That, yeah. That's something that I've um, I really got a lot out of. Um, the, the Barefoot, Barefoot the book, uh, which has been read by pretty much everyone. <laughs> um, obviously, that's a big one. Uh, I'm just, I've just actually purchased um, the the Peter Lynch uh, ran, not, not random walk, but um, one up, one up on Wall Street, one up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm really keen to get into that. Uh, I've also, I've also read um, the Little Book of Common Sense Investing, which I enjoyed, but towards the end got a little bit repetitive. You kind of knew where it was going. Mm. Um, and yeah, podcasts. Obviously, like uh, you know, I, I listen to a lot of Fire podcasts, which is all about you know obviously saving money and all that type of thing. But like I said, I'm not, I'm not someone who loves living on beans or anything like that. But um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely if I have a 465, that's going to be a bonus. So um, the other thing was the Barefoot Blueprint, which, which came off the back of the, uh, the Barefoot book, was uh, something that was a really good resource for me, both in, the terms, in terms of uh, um, personal finance and understanding understanding super and understanding investing, um, but also getting some stock tips, not necessarily from Scott um, himself, but uh, from different members in the, uh, in the community. Yeah, nice. So that was, they, they actually had a really cool forum, which I think, you know, there's nothing really like it out there. I know there's forums on Facebook, but one of the things with that is you can't necessarily be anonymous. Um, but yeah, there's nothing quite like the forum that, that they had. Um, but the, probably uh, probably the one resource I'd say to try and stay away from is is Ren's stock tips on, uh, <laughs> on, on Mastermind episodes. <laughs> I, I and stock of the year. Into, and um, stock of the year. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone a bit more conservative this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> as 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 we say, Dylan, nothing on the podcast is a, is a recommendation. <laughs> so you've always got to do your own research. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's right. Yeah. So. Nice. Yeah, Clover was the one that hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> Very much appreciate your time uh, over the last few episodes. It's always great hearing from the community and we appreciate you sharing your story, some of your key resources and uh, your big barrier to investing as well. So I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. No worries. Thank you very much. Love your work, guys.